Hello everybody, this episode I'm going to be showing something super, super exciting. Creating a timeline, and not just creating a timeline, but how to create a proper timeline that matches your sequence settings. This is kind of weird inside of Premiere because when you go up to File, New, Sequence, it create a new sequence. If you do it this way, look what it does. It brings up an, an old, D, by default, it brings up an old DVNTSC timeline here. Uh, if you hit OK and you drop footage into it, uh, it's going to be all weird. Watch this as we drop some footage here into this timeline. And it brings up this little thing saying the clip does not match the sequence of settings. Change the change sequence to match this clip settings. You just hit, if you hit something like keep existing settings and you move into your footage here what you get is your footage has been zoomed way up because this timeline here that it's created is a uh, 720 by 480 timeline by, by default, which is really dumb. They need to change that and update it so it's an HD one. But when I drop this in, this has been zoomed up. If I right click on this clip and say scale to frame size here, it zooms it down and fits it into the window. I just took my, this is UHD footage, which is near 4K footage, and it has zoomed it to fit into the 720 window, which is just really super small now. And this timeline is destructive. If you export this out, it has uh, downscaled your footage to 720 by 480. And it's letterboxed it as well because the aspect ratios don't fit. So I'm going to get rid of this timeline here. So a couple of things to keep in mind when you create, if you create a new timeline and you drop footage into it, the very first time you drop footage into this timeline here, it's going to ask you this question. And by the way, it only asks you this question if you drop it in from here. If you're editing from the source window and drop it in, it won't ask you at all. So when it brings this up, what it is doing is telling you that your, your timeline settings are different than your clip settings. And it's saying, do you want to match your timeline settings to your clip settings? If you hit change sequence settings, now it has changed your timeline settings to match the resolution and frame rate of your clip. Let me delete that and show you over here. Over in your project window, I'm going to move my mouse over and hit my tilde key, which will make this go large. Anything you select in here, by the way, if this is not showing up here, you have to go up to this little menu, pull down, and tell it to show your preview area. See, if it's unchecked, you don't see that. So if I'm, so I'm, going, to, so I'm going to check that. And now whatever you select down here, footage or a timeline. By the way, this is your footage icon. It's got a little film strip with a little audio waveform. So this means it's got video and audio attached, but it's going to show you these settings up here saying this is a merge clip, one that's been synced with audio, but the resolution is 3840 by 2160. That's uh, two times 1920 by 1080. This is called UHD, which is ultra high definition. It's not 4K. It's close to 4K, but some people call it 4K. But right here, you've got your pixel aspect ratio. Everything is standardized these days. It's, one, it's pretty much always 1.0, unless you're working with earlier footage. You don't have to generally worry about this. But the most important information here is your resolution and then right here. This is your frame rate, 23.976, which is essentially 24 frames per second. And then it shows your audio frequency and uh, the nature of your audio. This is a mono file and it's at 48,000 hertz. Now the sequence that I created, if I select this down here, it shows my sequence as the same because I dropped the clip in and I told it to change the sequence settings. So this is 3840 by 2160. Same pixel aspect ratio and the same frame rate. Now the timeline I created before, look at this, I select that, the one that I didn't tell it to change, look at the resolution. This is a big mismatch. This is an earlier DV style video here. It's uh, 720 by 480 and your pixel aspect ratio is somewhere to pixel aspect ratio from the earlier days and then your frame rate is 29.97 which and interlace which is pretty much 30 frames per second and it's interlace instead of progressive scan. So this is a complete and total mismatch of my footage. Some people will like the resolution different in their timeline if they're downscaling, if they know they're taking 4K footage and just editing a 1920 by 1080 and that's going to be their end product. So say they're just putting some something simple up to YouTube uh, and they don't want the 4K deal with the 4K footage, you might do a different settings on your timeline. I'm going to go to new item icon right here at the bottom of my project window and I'm going to create a new sequence. So let's say we are working in 1920 by 1080 but you've been delivered 4K footage. I'm going to go up to digital SLR here, the DSLR footage, and this really isn't just outfitted for DSLR. This is basically just uh, presets for some of the earlier DSLRs here. And I'm going to select DSLR 1080p 24, which is your which is 23.976 frame right there. But I'm going to hit OK, and it created my timeline, and you can see the settings right there. I'm going to grab some of my 4K footage, and I'm going to drop it into my timeline. It's going to say you got a mismatch here. This is for 
this is uh, ultra HD footage and you're putting in a 1920 by 1080 I'm going to tell it to keep existing settings but you'll notice that it, my footage is now zoomed up if I right click on this I can say scale to frame size and it will zoom it within uh, that area now my footage has been downscaled to 1920 by 1080 and it fits but if you don't want to have to do this to your footage every time you drop it in we can select a range of footage I'm just going to grab my scene 5 footage here I'm going to highlight all these and I'm going to go up to clip and we'll go down to video options and we're going to check mark scale to frame size this is now added the attribute of scaling to frame size to each one of these clips so now if I drag any of this footage into my timeline, it's going to automatically scale it to this timeline size. And it will only ask me that question when I drop the first clip in. After I have footage in my timeline, it won't ask me that question anymore. So it's going to ask me and I'm going to say, nope, I'm keeping existing settings. And now my footage is uh, scaling to the size of the timeline. So now it's basically downsampling everything and taking it from, uh, for, from Ultra HD down to 1920 by 1080. And by the way, if you want that to happen, all the footage that you import, you can go to Preferences under Premiere Pro and go to Media and under Media. Right here, Default Media Scaling, you can turn this to Scale to Frame Size. Set to Frame Size. Scale to Frame Size is probably the better thing to do here because then if you need to zoom up, it'll zoom up and maintain the resolution and it won't lose the quality. Set to Frame Size will actually convert it to 1920 by 1080 footage and then when you zoom up, it'll treat it like it's 1920 by 1080. So this is usually the option you want to use is Scale to Frame Size. Hit OK. And now any footage that you import from now on will have that attribute added to it. So then when you drop it into the timeline, it will scale to the frame size of the timeline that you're working in. So a couple of little more items here. Once again, let's let's create a crummy little uh, small sequence as DVNTSC just to kind of make this point. And if I hit OK, as I mentioned, when you drop a clip into the into the timeline it's going to ask you that question but if you're doing editing and you're double clicking on a clip and it loads it into the source monitor and it loads it into the source monitor if you put I for in point O for out point and you have a clip that you want to drop into a timeline now if I hit period to drop that in the timeline notice it did not ask me that question when it does it from the source monitor it will not ask you when you drop the first clip into the timeline look how it's all zoomed up here but if I grab this footage and drop it in right here, it'll ask me that question. And one more final way to create a timeline here. We showed you how to go down to your new item icon. I showed you how to go up here under file, new sequence as well. Probably one of the easiest ways to do a new timeline is I'm going to close my open sequences here. Now I have no sequence open. I have all my sequences down here. But you notice here once I have no timelines open, this says drop me to here to create sequence. This is probably one of the easiest ways to create a sequence. What you need to be aware of though is if you have mixed footage, meaning like if you have mixed resolutions and mixed frame rates, you have to decide what your timeline, what your final timeline settings are going to be. If you find a clip that matches that, say you have, uh, you want your whole project to be in UHD and you have some 1080 footage as well. When you import your footage, your 1080 footage, you'll want to go up. You'll want to go to your preferences under media and have this check marked here if you're if you're mixing resolutions so you don't have to sit there and rescale everything once you drop it in your timeline and then you import all your footage with that attribute added and then you find one let's say we're doing we're doing our final delivery in in ultra hd i'm going to select this file here and we've got 3840 by 2160 you can just simply grab that drag it over hover over this timeline and drop it and now it has created a timeline based on the settings of that clip so if I select this clip you'll notice 3840 by 2160 23.976 P I click uh, and here's my timeline it created and notice it may name the timeline after that clip you may wish to change that name this is kind of obnoxious when you have timelines that are named after clips but I select this timeline and look it's got the exact same settings so if I want to change that timeline name I'm going to select my timeline, hit the enter or return key, and it will highlight it ready to name it. And I can name this final sequence or whatever you want to call it. Now that that's named, notice it is in the folder where the clip was located. If you want to pull that out, basically you just drag that over to the left, drop it, and now it pulled that out of my and that now it pulled it out of that folder and it's easy to find it's right there. You may wish to create a folder if you're doing mul for just for your sequences if you're doing multiple sequences. Anyway, that is the nature of creating timelines and sequences inside of Premiere Pro. If you have any questions, please post them. Thanks for watching.